Hey church family, good to see you again. Welcome to the tour of my room. Here we have the door, and here we have my closet. Just kidding, you're here for Sunday school. Let's go. Hi kids, this is flight attendant Cheryl. Welcome to worship. And as you see, I forgot my suit and because it's at dry clean. And you know what? Pilot George is missing again. But Pilot George is here. I'm Pilot George. Psych! Pilot George actually isn't missing. You the gotcha. We're gonna sing a song about being a Christian. Pilot George, what did you just say we were? We are Christians. We're Christians? How do you spell that? C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N? Well, guess what? We have a song about that. Hit it! Guess what? I'm not actually flying Ted and Cheryl. I'm random passenger Bob. See you next time. Hello, everyone. God is trustworthy, and you can trust in God. The story of Abraham and Isaac is a story of trust. Now, remember, Abraham and and Sarah waited for many years to have a son named Isaac. Let's take a look at the Bible, particularly in Genesis chapter 22, about the story of Abraham and Isaac. A long time ago, there was a man named Abraham who had a son named Isaac, who he loved very much. And one day, God called out to Abraham. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, God said, Take your son your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of those mountains of which I shall tell you. So the next day, Abraham set out to make an offering to the Lord. He cut the wood for the offering, saddled up his donkey, and took two young men to help while traveling along with his beloved son Isaac. Now approaching the place for the offering, Abraham says to the two men, Stay here with the donkey, and we will be back. Isaac noticed there was no offering. Isaac said to his father, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire in the wood, but where is a lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they both went up together. And when they came to the place where God had told Abraham to build the altar, then Abraham took his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood, and then was about to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or anything to him. For now I know that you fear God seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then in the bushes a ram appeared and seemed to be caught in the bushes by his horns. Abraham took the, took the ram, offered that up to the Lord, and called this place that the Lord will provide in remembrance of what happened. In Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18, it continues. 
And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. You know, from the Bible story, we learn that God is trustworthy. We can put our trust in God because he provides for us. Now, he may not always provide what we want, but God provides what we need. In this story, let me ask you, what did Abraham trust God? He trusted God for a sacrifice. Now think, how did God provide? God provided a, a ram in the bushes. Now since God is trustworthy, how can we trust God? Now we may not have to trust God for a sacrifice like Abraham, but there are daily opportunities we could trust God on how he provides. Maybe for a meal like lunch, we could trust God for how he provides. When we sit down at the table and see the food that our parents prepared for us and cooked for us, we can give thanks to God. Let me ask you, what is another thing that you could trust God for? Maybe you're trusting God that we could go back to church soon or that school will be open again. Or maybe you're trusting God that you'll be able to see and play games with your friends again. Perhaps you could pray and ask God, God, I trust you that someday I'll be able to see and play games with my friends again. Or you could pray, God, I trust that you're taking care of my grandpa or my grandma and I hope very soon that I'll be able to see them again. God is trustworthy. What are you going to trust God for today? One more thing. Abraham was called to sacrifice his beloved son. He was spared from going through with this horrific act. However, let it be known, God himself sacrificed his beloved son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus Christ is the substitutionary sacrifice for all who would trust in him for the forgiveness of sin. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Will you trust Jesus Christ today? All right, guys, welcome back to Memory Verse today. Guess what we're doing? We're memorizing a verse. Fantastic. So today's Memory Verse is right here. And we're gonna read it together. You ready, you ready? You ready? You You ready? I know you're ready. Fantastic, let's go. All right, ready? One, two, three. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. Genesis 22, 8. Fantastic, great job all y'all at home. I know you guys are keeping up. But you know what we're gonna do? Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna read it again. Wow, mind blowing. All right, ready? Ready for this? All right, ready, go. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. Genesis 22, 8. Fantastic job. And you know what we're gonna do? Just for good measure, we're gonna read it one more time, all right? You ready? One more time, all right? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. Genesis 22, 8. Okay, fantastic, great job, guys. Now, first, before we start explaining what this verse means, we need to know what's going on. Where does this verse come from? Well, this verse comes from the book of Genesis. And in this part of the book of Genesis, just like we heard in the story earlier, Abraham and Isaac are going up the mountain to offer a sacrifice to God. And Isaac asked Abraham, Dad, 
Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And this is what Abraham says. He says, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering my son. Now, what does this all mean? So this is before Abraham and Isaac knew what was going to happen. This is before God stopped Abraham from um, sacrificing Isaac. So Abraham doesn't actually know that God's going to stop him at this time. But what Abraham says here is a demonstration of faith. Even though Abraham has been told by God to sacrifice Isaac, Abraham says God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. He doesn't say, when, when Isaac asks, where's the lamb? Abraham doesn't say, oh, well, we're going to kill you. He doesn't say, oh, don't worry about it. He gives this answer. God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Abraham is responding in faith. He has faith in God. He has faith that God will provide for this sacrifice. But how does this mean for us? Well, how does this relate to us in this modern world? We're, we're not Abraham. We're not Isaac. I don't think our parents are going to sacrifice us, or at least I hope they won't. So what does this mean for us? Well, this is a really good connection to something else. Our problem is that we are sinners, but and we deserve to go to hell for that. But instead, God has provided for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. But the lamb that was provided for us was Jesus. Jesus was sent as our replacement, and he was the lamb that was sacrificed instead of us when we were meant to be condemned to hell. So, when it says God will provide for himself the, burnt, the lamb for a burnt offering, it's not just referring to Abraham and Isaac, but it refers back to us as well. When we were meant to be condemned, when we were sinners and we did bad things and we deserved to be punished, instead of punishing us, God sent Christ down to die on the cross. And because Christ died on the cross, our sins can be paid for. So this verse doesn't mean just that God provided a lamb for Abraham and Isaac, but God also provides a lamb for us. Even though we were meant to be sacrificed, even though we were the ones who were supposed to be punished, God has sent Jesus to die on the cross in our place. So that's the meaning of this verse, guys. And just for good measure, we're gonna read it one more time. Are you ready? You ready? I know you're ready. Are you ready though? Are you, you ready? Right next to him. Are you ready? That's right, you're ready. All right, fantastic. Ready? One, two, three. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. Genesis 22, 8. Fantastic, great job, guys. Remember that even though we were the ones who deserved punishment, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. And in fact, he already has in Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. Do, do all those things. And I'll see you next time. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Mr. Ed. The part of the show where Mr. Ed comes out and sings a silly song. Boys and girls. How many here, raise your hand, how many here take a shower and raise your hands? Oh, how boring, boys and girls. Hey, this is a fun activity. Why don't you take a bath? Yeah, you know what a bath is? Take a bubble bath. Tell your parents that soapy water kills viruses. And you always have to take some toys to play with. Uh, play with. And what about a rubber ducky? Don't these rubber duckies look good? Uh, boys and girls, I have four rubber duckies. And I would like you to learn this song. The, the lyrics are in the description, okay? Learn it, record it, and upload it to YouTube and send us a link. And the four best videos will get, I will deliver a rubber ducky and a bag wow. of Mr. Ed's famous... Uh, uh, corn. What's it called? <laughs> Kettle, corn. Kettle corn. Kettle corn. <laughs> you have to live somewhere in Sacramento County. It's so. really good. You want this kettle corn. So if you really want to win, have your whole family sing too. And the accompanists, if you have little drums or things, or like, and you'll even get more points 
if you can translate it into Mandarin, Cantonese, or Spanish. Okay, this is the rubber ducky song. Okay, it goes like this. Hello, my name is David. I'm going to be bringing you today craft. God tests Abraham. What you should have is the structure sheet and the paper that you'll be cutting your craft out on. It is on page 26 and 27 of the PDF. And you will need these sheets, tape or a glue stick, color pencils or markers, and then also scissors, okay? So your first thing you're going to do is you're going to color in Abraham and his son and this ram up here. You can do it in any color that you want. Just to show you what I did is, you can see the colors I did. I kind of started coloring Abraham and his son in. I also started coloring in the ram and also the ram that's um, here too. So once you have it all colored in, you're going to cut out the square. Okay? Now cut out along the solid lines all the way around and also cut out this little ram too. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out to show you how it's going to look like. So make sure you cut along the solid lines. Okay. So if you take a look, that's exactly what I'm doing. Now I'm also going to cut out the ram next. So I cut out my ram, I had it colored in. I also had or have my square with Abraham and his son. 
Now, on this square, there are dashed lines and there's solid lines. Okay, there's actually four solid lines. There's one here, one here, one at the bottom, and one at the bottom here. Okay? You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut those solid lines only. Do not cut the dotted lines, only cut the solid lines. So, I'm gonna cut the solid line only, and it's gonna look like something like this. See, I only cut down to where the solid line is. Okay, so I have something looking like this. I'm gonna cut three more times because there's three more solid lines. So you're gonna end up with something like this. Okay, see right where I, the solid lines were, I cut there. Now where the dotted lines are, you're going to fold it. So what that means is you can put it on the table if you need to. So wherever the dotted lines is, you're gonna fold inward, okay? So inward towards the blank side. So if this was the printed side, you're gonna take this part here and you're going to fold onto the dotted line so that it ends up like this. Okay, see how I folded it? So there's another dotted line here. You're going to do the same thing for the entire page. Wherever you see a dotted line, you're going to fold it. Okay, I'm going to put this on the table so that it'd be easier to fold on the dotted lines. One dotted line there, another dotted line there. Find all those dotted lines. And when you have all the folded dotted lines, I'm going to use the one that I colored. Okay, you see all the folded lines, all the dotted lines are folded. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to assemble it. Okay, now you want to find there's three squares. They have letters. There's one with A, there's one with B, there's one with C. You want the A and B on top, like I have right now. Okay? Now, you're gonna take the A flap and you're gonna watch this and be some magic. You're gonna push it behind the middle flap and it should fold together. Okay? So you can take A, fold it here, and you also take B and you fold it behind that middle flap also. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. Ooh, look at that. Take A, fold it behind. Take B, and fold it behind. Okay. What you're gonna end up with is something like this, okay? Um, you're gonna take glue or tape, and you're gonna put it behind flap A, okay? So you see, I put a little piece of tape here. You're gonna put it behind the middle one, and then you're gonna tape A, on top of letter B. Okay, so you're gonna end up with something that's gonna look like this. Okay, so I taped A on top of B. Okay. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna then, once you have that glued or tape, you're gonna turn it around. Okay. Now you have two other flaps on the other side. You have a C flap, and then you also have one with Abraham hugging his son. So you're gonna take Abraham hugging his son, that flap, Okay, that flap, you're going to put glue or tape behind it. So in my case, I put tape, put tape behind it, and you're going to tape it to flap C. Okay, so well, tape flap C, okay? I forgot to mention, if you're taping and you don't know the tape rolling method, all you do is take a piece of tape and you kind of roll it up onto itself like a tube and roll it up the tape and voila you have something to stick tape on if you need help from your parent mom and dad or a sibling they can uh, help you out with that okay so once you have Abraham and son taped onto C we're almost done okay so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it this way so Abraham's son is right side up. Underneath this blank flap here, this blank here, you are going to take your ram, your nice colored ram, and then you're going to get more tape or glue. 
you're going to glue the side behind the ramp. So here's the ramp again. You're going to glue or tape. In this case, I'm going to tape it. Put the tape right behind it. Okay. Again, here's Abraham and son, the blank side, right on top. You're going to glue that ram right to that blank side. Okay. And then you're going to close that ram down so that we can see that Abraham has found the ram. Okay. Now, we're almost done. Okay, so we got that part done. The ram pasted onto or glued or taped to the back side. I'm gonna turn it over. There should be this extra flap where we're going to also tape or glue that down. So this flap where it says A, we are going to tape or glue. And we're gonna tape or glue it down. Okay, now we have a box, a square. So from the story about God tests Abraham, you learn that Abraham, in his obedience to listening to God, had uh, put his son onto the altar. And before he can complete the sacrifice, God provided a ram for the sacrifice. So Abraham found the ram, and when you open up the box, the ram takes place of the sacrifice on the altar. And Abraham and his son, they are, um, the son is saved. And then it shows them that they are hugging, okay? So this little craft here shows the story about God testing Abraham and God providing for Abraham. Now, one last thing is on the instructions. There's this little verse down here, okay? And the verse is Genesis 22, 8. Abraham said God will provide for himself the lamb. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this here and cut out that verse. And once you have it cut out, just like I have here, I cut this out. You're going to tape or glue and you put it on the back side of the altar. Okay, so here's the front side. I'm going to turn it around to the back and you're going to put or glue the verse to help you remember about the story of Abraham being tested by God. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this particular craft and may you have a very good week and hope to see you all next week. Bye. Spirit the Lord